Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Starting a Counseling Practice Podcast. This is Kelly, one of the coaches at ZinniMe, and I am joined today by our team member, Jenny. Welcome. Hi, I'm so glad to be here. This is part of our series of where we're introducing the different team members that support all of our clients at ZinniMe. And we're going to be talking today about Jenny's role and also how it applies to clinicians in private practice. So Jenny, why don't you share a little bit about what you do for Zenimi? Well, first of all, I am the voice on the other side of the help email. So that's where most people are going to be interacting with me. Yeah. Uh, my title is sales and service expert. And so I help out in lots of different areas, a lot of fun areas. And um, I'm in the community quite a bit. I get yeah. in there and try to help where I can. Um, I'm doing the phone calls now. If you're interested in one of our programs, I would love to talk to you mm-hmm. because I'm absolutely in love with the programs that we offer. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just a little dabbling here and there, whatever needs to get done. Right. I think when, uh, this role has been, this is our first role that we had actually, when Miranda and I first had our first hire, we decided we would get an admin assistant to help us. And we decided to pay them, whether we use them or not, <laughs> it's kind of, it would kind of like force for me, it would force my hand into utilizing someone because I'm used to just doing it all myself. And over time, that role has kind of shifted. And it's interesting, like how you bring up the title change of like sales and service. Um, because people think like, oh, well, customer support, but it is kind of a sales role. And that is something that is actually common for therapists. I know we don't really talk about therapy and sales. We never really pair those words together, but what is sales to you? Because I don't you know, I don't think people were talking to you would experience it as a sales call at all. So how would you define it? So sales to me is, is presenting you with something that's beneficial, pointing out what the uh, benefits are and testing it out to see if it's a fit. I don't see I'm not a used car salesman. (laughs) Uh, You know, um, we actually have a long history in our family of people being um, let go of positions in sales because if it doesn't fit, they don't force it. You know, my my dad always used to tell the story about how he got fired from Sears because he wouldn't sell this guy a TV he didn't need. And so it really is about finding what the person wants and needs, meeting that need. And if you can't meet the need, helping them figure out how to get to where they need to. Exactly. And I think that that's something that clinicians do in their private practice, right? It's that someone calls and it's not like, hey, I'm here to sell you on how therapy is going to help heal. It's really, let's explore what you need. If I'm the right fit, this is what I have to offer. And if not, let me send you to where you need to go. It is an act of service and love, really. Right. It's, it's more of a, it's almost a mission. It's almost a, a, a connecting of, of the hearts and helping people, helping people grow no matter whether it's with you or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're such a gift. I feel so fortunate to like <laughs> have you on our team because one of the things that you are an encouragement to me, right? Like you will tell me, Kelly, do you know how amazing such and such is? And I'm like, eh, hey, you know, no big deal. <laughs> and you really do hold a lot of, pride in the work that we do collectively, like that, and you know that you are a part of that. Um, Can you talk about that experience of sort of like coming into our culture, getting to really understand what we do and how you find yourself fitting into that purpose and mission? Oh, so it was, it's just been mind blowing. If you look at the last year, Mm. Um, coming from a corporate world, I don't know. It's, it's not about rules. It's about building. It's about truly, you know, the, the, when you go and you work for somebody, they always say, Oh, this is a family team based atmosphere. (laughs) And, (laughs) and it never is, (laughs) but here it is. I mean, um, you know, when something important happens to one of us, we all, are affected and we all embrace each other and support each other. And the same thing with our clinicians, you know, our, not our clinicians, but our our therapists that work Mm -hmm. with us. Um, 
you know, when something happens to them, it really affects us. And we really try to, to practice what we preach. That was something that Kelly, you and I talked about um, recently is that Zenny Me is very true to their beliefs. You don't go and teach these therapists to hire people on, uh, you know, as employees as opposed to contract and treat them well and not do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And the corporate world is just so full of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just such a, it's a breath of fresh air. You're almost afraid to breathe in because it was like, <laughs> can I really trust this? And, right. and I've found in the last, what's been 11 months now, uh, 10 months mm -hmm. that I can, and mm -hmm. I can. And I, I hope that I portray that to everybody that I interact with. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting too, for people who have group practices, listening to you, like understanding that every person that is on the team plays a role in living out what you teach, you know, and you've had to really dive in and learn all. I mean, you've been going through boot camp <laughs> in your own way. Like it's been a boot camp, a business school for you as well of like learning all the nuances. And it takes time to do that. Um, so, you know, I want to hear like how you feel your role contributes to the mission, because I think other therapists, they hire, but they don't think about culture and what we're creating. Right. I like, we want honesty in our, our team culture, hopefully is honesty. Yes. We're, we're honest about like our foibles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, we try to be upfront about that. We strive for better communication and kind communication and those kinds of things. So, you know, how did you come in and add to the culture and kind of adapt to? Um, oh, gee. So I think that one of my biggest additions is that I am kind of the, the face of Zenny Me, mm -hmm. um, especially in written form. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I contribute my heart. I contribute mm -hmm. a love for what we have going on and a love for the individual. Mm -hmm. um, I am not a, a detail person. I'm a big picture person. So there's been some adaption, you know, <laughs> adapting for me. Yeah. Um, but as part of the team, though, we have a lot of people who are, are very good at the small things. And so sometimes they don't see the big things. And so my view is valued just the way that I am with room for growth. Mm -hmm. um, I, I bring a level of creativity as, so I'm, I'm a, in my other world, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a coach. Yes. <laughs> and so I bring a viewpoint of number one, I've, <laughs> I've spent a lot of money on really bad coaching that I thought was good until I saw boot camp and it was like, oh. I was completely blown away. Um, but I also, um, I think I bring a different point of view than just a, a VA that you come in and, and, you know, let's do the calendar. Let's do, yeah. you know, check these boxes because I understand what it's like on both sides of the coin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I understand that this is a huge investment, not only in finances, but in time and effort and dream for the people who are coming to us. Right. And that it's a huge investment in, in the same things for you as the builders and us as a piece of the puzzle that gets to put it together. Mm -hmm. The, what's so cool is I love how your heart just shines through. And my hope is that it is inspiring people that are listening about, I don't want just a VA to check off boxes. I need someone who believes in this, who brings their own diversity to the team, who says, Hey, like what I can, I can add and make it even better, which is a beautiful thing because I think we did a uh, evaluation of like, skills and things and you compliment uh me I, like we're a little bit opposite um 
in terms of like how quick start versus it was a Colby assessment I think we had done and there's you're actually different than the team which is so what we needed because we can't all be on the same trajectory in terms of how we get stuff done and um yeah and I think that as I say and that's so so anti big company culture too because everywhere that you work, they want you to fit, fit in these boxes. Right. And the fact that you want people who don't fit in the same boxes <laughs> is, is part of what has made this an amazing team. Right. Because we know that where, you know, where I have strength, somebody else doesn't. And where somebody else does, I know that it's my weakness, but I can reach out to them and say, hey, can you help me with this? And yeah. everybody's happy to do it. It's not like, yeah, oh, she has the same problems I do. Why is she reaching out to me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it takes more effort, you know, if we're not all boxed in, um, because it takes more communication, lines are a little bit blurrier, but it can be a lot more creative and fun too. Um, so I think really understanding that whoever is picking up the phone is the face of the company, must really believe in what you're doing. Um, and if y'all can hear Jenny at all, <laughs> you will know that she's being really honest when she says like, she cares about people, like she has a heart for them. We get a lot of emails every day and some of them are tragic and some of them are elated. And either way, she approaches it with love and kindness and respect and is there, sees herself as that guide. And that's what, whoever answers the phone at your practice, you want that. You want someone who ha brings that heart, that warmth and that empathy, and also that desire to, to help the person, not in the sake of, I've got to meet my quota of conversion of calls but in terms of doing things with integrity of like, if it's a good fit, I want to convert that person to be a client. But if not, I'm going to at least convert them to the right next step so they don't waste time and they start getting access to mental health care or in our case, support in their business right away. Yeah, yeah I, I want them, when they finish interaction with me, I want them to know that regardless of whatever decision they make, I don't care whether we're talking about purchasing a program or we're talking about attending a webinar or just finding a piece of information, I want them to know that, that I truly wish them the utmost best because if they know that, that we love them, mm -hmm then one of two things is going to happen. They're going to send somebody to us that needs us, or they're going to pass that on to somebody else who yeah. needs it. Mm -hmm. And so regardless, somebody in the world is going to wake up better tomorrow mm. because of the love I showed today. Mm. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> well, that concludes the podcast. No, no. <laughs> I, mean, it's, yeah, it's a great, I mean, it's very true and very well said. When you think about working with therapists and I mean, your realm of coaching is within health and wellness, um, less mental health, more like nutritional, physical well-being. Um, what, it, what have you loved about learning about this mental health field and therapists? Well, I'll tell you, I, I mean, I'm from Texas. And so <laughs> I have a lot of learning to do about the culture to be quite honest. And Kelly has been amazing about it. It's like, okay, I'm not understanding this. You're going to have to break this down for me. And so there's a lot of growth room and I love that, but I love our therapists because I love watching them grow. Mm. Um, I, am I allowed to say names? I can think of one Maybe person. first name. <laughs> okay. Lisa Beth. Mm -hmm. I have uh, the very first day that I started, I got an email from her requesting help on something. And I have just watched her grow and blossom mm. over the last few months. And it's the same thing. I see, you know, therapists come in and they're usually in the, when they first join us, they're kind of in a, either in a state of panic or overwhelm. And then seeing them just kind of embrace things and grow and, and blossom and become, you know, not necessarily where they want to end because this is kind of a never ending thing, mm -hmm. but 
just watching that growth has been amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so yes, some culture shock. So if I ever say anything wrong, I'm not meeting it. Just smack me upside the head and say, hey, yeah. we love you. Let me explain a little further what's yeah. going on. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. It's an interesting kind of cultural shift, I imagine. Mm -hmm. And being from Texas, I have a deep empathy for what you're talking about <laughs> um, a little bit. And I think, okay, so a couple of points of like, Thank you for sharing how much you love watching them grow. And I think I'm hoping people hear that pe when people contact us, we don't really forget. If you're, if you show up, we will we'll do our best to remember you and support you. And uh, we don't see it as like just a number or a sale. No, no it's a no. person. But another thing that I think is interesting is that com like how to lead into a new culture, because when therapists are hiring on their team, not everybody comes from the same culture or has the same beliefs and values and how to have those discussions. I remember in particular, uh, there was like a comment on a Facebook, no, an Instagram something um, and discussing, I think the intersectionality of race and finance mm -hmm. or something like that. And like you and I sitting through and talking through, what does that really mean? And how do we approach these things? And where is our heart at with it? And why we use these words and not these other ones and how these other words, where they come from and you know why we're not defensive and why we're open about this kind of feedback, especially as white women leading a business and, and things like that. And being able just to have those conversations again, out of love with each other, I think has been really helpful because we both learn from each other in those experiences. And that's part of leadership, I think, for anyone that is in a private practice of how you have those discussions and the heart at which you approach them will set the tone for the ability to continue having those conversations right. over and over. And you want to make sure you hire somebody who is willing to have those conversations. Yes. Because I knew immediately when I read that, it was like, I knew what feelings it evoked in me. And yeah. I knew I, I knew that that was not, that was not the way that Zinni me is. And so it was like, okay, I need to dig further. Yeah. I need to learn more. Mm -hmm. And so you want to find somebody who maybe isn't your carbon copy, Correct. but that is willing to learn and understand your heart. Yes. So, especially as a face of the business. You know, my job is to be Zinni me and portray your love as well as my own. Mm -hmm. I think you add an extra dash of special. <laughs> <so. laughs> um, yeah, I think, I mean, when you talk about it, I think, gosh, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, but it's not because, yeah. I mean, I guess it's, I don't know. I, I, there is some pressure there because I do, I do hold in myself a desire for Zenny me to be everything that I can see it is mm -hmm. because I am, I do feel a part of the team. Yeah, you are. <laughs> and yeah. Um, but I've got a really good manager who turns around and says, okay, put the entrepreneur hat over there. They've got that. Go home, breathe. <laughs> and, and that is part of it too, is that as being an entrepreneur, I understand that, that drive, that drive. And I just really want to give that to you too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, that's good. And sometimes I do need to remember, okay, this is their baby, not yours. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think it's important for you to be able to speak up and say, Hey, I think there was one time we had a conversation where you said, I don't think people really fully understand the value. Y'all are underselling this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and for us to be able to have those kind of conversations, I think is important and to surround yourself as a clinician, a business owner with people who hold you to a high standard and want what's best for you, I think is important. And you've done that for me and Miranda, for sure. Good. Uh, good. That, that, I like that because I do hold you to a high standard because I hold you such at high, such a high level. <laughs> <laughs> surprise no but I mean seriously because you have done mm -hmm. an amazing things and when you speak I expect I expect you to hold to your beliefs yeah. just like I expect you to hold me to mine yeah and you've done that yeah yeah 
and anything that I can do to help make things better. I always, that's yeah. what I want. Yeah. It's taking you, I mean, you've taken a lot of ownership in Zanini and I think that that shows in how people are served in our community. So if y'all want a chance to talk to Jenny, you can have that. Um, because like I said, Jenny is there to hop on the phone. If you've been thinking about boot camp or one of our other programs, primarily boot camp right now, though, um, our business school, excuse me. Um, she's there to help walk you through with a process to figure out what's right for you. And again, that process is one out of love and curiosity. Um, and then you ultimately make the decision, um, kind of thing. So, uh, if, they want to connect with you, Jenny. And the best way to do that is really to email help at Zenny Me, I guess. Maybe they can so. either email help at Zenny Me or if they go on the boot camp page, the sign up page, mm -hmm. there's a link to make a phone call to find out more. Yeah. And they can schedule a call with me right there too. Yeah. Who wouldn't love to chat with Jenny? <laughs> But I will tell you, she'll make you believe in yourself more than you thought was possible. So watch out if you get on the phone with her. Jenny, thanks for being on the podcast and letting people hear your heart. Um, we're so honored to have you choose to be part of our team because that is your choice. I could force you, but I know that would be a fun <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> and I hope that, you know, as we're going through this series and I know it's like, why would you have your marketing assistant or your uh, sales and service rep person, like get on a podcast, because I think it's important for all of y'all to see behind the scenes of Zenny Me and how we take care of you, but also for you to be inspired um, of how can you create a team in your, your practice that really does improve the level of service and change and impact in your community. So Jenny is a huge part of that. So thank you, Jenny, for sharing and being here and meet Jenny. If you've been thinking about it and you've got questions, you're not sure. Jenny is the one to talk to. Well, thank you so much. And yeah, just sign up. I'd love to talk. That's yeah. <laughs> all <laughs> no right. We'll put there, the link right? in the show notes and we'll see you all next time. Bye.